it's awesome to be here in London and speaking to some amazing folks in the audience. It's my first time in London, and I love it. So before I get started, I have a question. For how many of you is Go the only programming language that you have ever coded in? Not a single one, right? So we all come from different languages. So, so did I. Um, I started my career uh, writing system very log, C, Ruby, JavaScript, and now Go. I've been a software developer for over 10 years now. I've worked at many Silicon Valley companies. Um, some of you, you might have heard. Um, uh, Intel, LinkedIn, Fitbit, and now I'm at Heroku. Uh, I live in San Francisco Bay Area, and um, I travel here to share my thoughts and experiences with you. Um, and um, as you might have noticed, this is a talk in the beginner track of this conference, so it'll be more like fundamentals that you need to know uh, to build APIs in Go. So my name is Sojanya. I'm a senior engineer at Heroku. How many of you have heard about Heroku? Oh, oh my gosh, a lot of people. Very cool. Yeah, Heroku is a developer platform that's, that makes it super easy to deploy your applications onto the cloud. Um, at Heroku, I'm on the runtime team um, that is responsible for Dino container orchestration. And these are distributed systems that are written in both Ruby and Go. And um, I, um, I write systems in um, using both gRPC and REST. Um, as a software developer, um, getting into Go only three years ago, I noticed a disconnect. It, Go has a really steep cur learning curve, and it's not quite beginner friendly. And I hear the same sentiment from um, many of my friends in, um, in other startups. And, one of the things I, uh, I want uh, to do by the end of this talk is, is enable people to um, be able to do, make that first step to, in building the APIs. Um, what else? So the agenda for today's talk is, um, is we're going to talk about the problem set that I'm going to try to solve and go over uh, some packages and methods um, th that I've used uh, to build this API and, uh, and mix and match those packages to build a simple API. Takeaways. As I was prepping for this talk, I was thinking, as an audience sitting out there, uh, what do I want to get out of it? In most places I've worked at, Go is not the only language I, I, I write code in every day. It's usually a mix of uh, services in Ruby, Node, and Go. So when I'm transitioning between languages, I don't want to be tied to innates of specific frameworks. So, um, so like, that's why I'm here, and my intent of this talk is to, for you to get, get out of this with, like, some real good basics so that you can build um, APIs. Uh, next up. So let's talk about the problem set. I want something simple. Let's say I'm building a simple nutritional service API, um, which implements the basic CRUD operations, create, read, update, and delete for those endpoints. Those are uh, fruits, grains, and vegetables, really simple. And this needs to be a RESTful API, and this needs to have versioning. And this is the problem we're trying, uh, I, have, I have tried to solve in this set of slides. And uh, for most APIs, uh, you would want versioning. You won't want uh, authentication. You want a data store on the back end. And then um, you would want rate limiting. So if you have used Rails before, you have, you have like noticed this set of architecture. What this, um, this is the architecture that, I'm, uh, that I've implemented in this um, set of um, API. And what this is doing pretty much is, is the router is taking in the incoming request and, um, and which is passing in to a, a write controller based on the handler. 
and the controller is responsible for uh, getting the data from the data store or updating the data or creating the data uh, with the model. Um, and for this particular uh, problem, I've used Postgres as my data store. So it's really simple, simple API design, right, in that case. Let's say I'm new to Go. And I'm exploring options on what's the most efficient way to implement this system. And, um, and look at what Google gives me back. And when I Googled it, um, I get a couple of frameworks, and some of them are more widely used than the others. And with most of these frameworks, you can build a Railsy style API. And um, what, what I've noticed is that with some of the frameworks, the documentation is out of date, and uh, some of them are not even maintained. Some, um, some have downloaded like five minutes worth of packages onto my system. And I am expecting that should not be the case when I'm like, that's like a simple problem I'm trying to solve, and, and I have so much overhead. So, so why do I DIY? I worked at two companies who, which use Go, and at neither places we, use we have used frameworks. And um, because frameworks are not widely adopted. And if the maintainer doesn't maintain it, you would end up maintaining the framework, or you would have to live with someone else's design decisions. Plus, the Go standard library and the package system gives you the tools to implement this, uh, this set of, uh, pro uh, to implement the solution for this set of problem. And if you're framework agnostic, then you don't have to try, um, try understanding the innates of, of the framework. How do I DIY? I would consider this the most important slide. Um, so for that architecture that I've shown you before, um, the router, I have chosen Goshi because it's very famous and uh, it's also, it also has really amazing capabilities. And uh, uh, for the controller, it's gonna be a basic Go function. And for the data store, it's, it's Postgres, but uh, the way I access the data store is through database SQL package and libpq Postgres driver. Uh, for migrations, I've used a Golang migrate package. And Golang migrate is, um, is forked from Matt's migrate. Uh, if you guys have used um, that before. And um, for authentication, I've used net HTTP basic auth. And uh, for rate limiting, it's, um, it's the rate uh, from time package. So uh, the next set of slides are gonna be very um, fundamental type of um, slides. So it's, it's gonna be details about the types and methods of the packages that I've used. And I think these are like really important and it should be on the back of your mind usually. So, um, so let's start with uh, HTTP handler func uh, from the net HTTP package. And this, um, this type allows uh, the use of ordinary functions as HTTP handlers. Um, next one is type serve mux. Um, this, um, this is a HTTP request multiplexer and um, it matches the URL of each incoming request with the set of registered patterns. And it has a number of methods on it that you might have used in the past. Um, and uh, they are handle, handle func, handler, and serve HTTP. And um, each of them refer to like handle registers the handler uh, for the given pattern, handle func is pretty much sim uh, similar to handle, but you write the function in line. And uh, for um, handler returns the handler for the given request, and serve HTTP dispatches the request to the handler. I'm gonna drink some water for a minute. So. The next important uh, type in, in net HTTP is request. 
And as you might have guessed, this represents a HTTP request. And it also has, a, has so many methods on it, but these are some of the most frequently used. Uh, basic auth returns the username and password um, that is sent in the request. And uh, sometimes you send username and password. Sometimes you send an API token based on how you uh, want to do your auth. And um, context returns the request context. Cookie returns the request uh, cookie details. And then uh, with set basic auth, you can set the basic auth information onto your request. And um, user agent gives, gives the information about the request user agent. So th that's pretty much it for the different types and methods for in the net HTTP package that I've used. Um, and the next package I'm going to go over is Goshi. Goshi is an idiomatic router package. And um, the reason I've used Goshi is it's very easy to, to write out RESTful routes and, and RESTful APIs. And Goshi has many methods on it, but these are the ones that I've used so far. Um, it also supports uh, middleware, adding middleware, and, um, and it's very easy to do that on Goshi. And a lot of um, organizations use it. Uh, so it has um, a method get for a, every HTTP verb out there, um, get, put, post, uh, patch, and delete. And, um, and the method route is for subrouting. So the next package I'm going to review is the database SQL um, package. And um, this package provides a generic interface around SQL databases. So it is usually used with the database driver, and it has a lot of type, uh, types and methods on it. But m the most frequently used are type DB and type TX. Uh, DB represents a database connection, and it has many methods on it. but most people use the uh, begin exec prepare query and query row methods. And uh, let's go a little bit deep into what each of those do. As if you are coming from different languages, it's, these are pretty obvious, but uh, I'll just still go over. So begin uh, is used for database transactions. So it starts a database transaction, and it returns the transaction, on which you can either, um, based on how you want to implement your logic, you can call commit or roll back. And uh, exec is mostly used for, uh, for um, queries which does a state uh, change. So it would be either create, update, or delete. And exec does n uh, never returns any rows back. So uh, with prepare, you can prepare SQL uh, database statement, and you can execute later. And with um, query, it's, it's usually used with a typical select statement, and it returns a bunch of rows back. And query row, uh, it only returns one row, as you might have guessed. Um. So libpq. This package pretty much is, uh, is the Postgres driver, and it is used in conjunction with database SQL. And I've only used one function on it. Um, it's, I just opened the database connection with it. So the next set of slides are code snippets from the implementation of that architecture that you have seen. Uh, the code is right here. If you want to take a picture or anything, I'll just leave it for a minute while I drink some more water. It's on GitHub. <clears throat> so this is a code snippet from the authentication layer for this nutritional API. As you can see, it's really, really basic, right? So this, um, this uh, function gets the token from the back end. And usually, when you are accessing a public API, you register your organization onto the API system, and it gives you an access token. And that system stores that access token to uniquely identify you. And also, you will be using that token to uh, authenticate yourself. So that's the token there. And um, so rec.basicauth, as we have seen before, it's part of net HTTP package requests. And what it gives you back is a username, password, and um, and a bool. And 
in this particular case, as I'm only sending the access token, I have only used uh, the password portion of it, and um, I've checked if it matches, and if it matches, I, I return a bool. And this is like really simple um, auth system. Next one um, is, um, is a little bit about the migrations um, that um, that you would be using uh, to implement the data uh, data store side of things. So Golang Migrate is a package that um, is uh, forked from Matt's Migrate. Um, and if you do migrate dash dash help after getting the Golang Migrate, it gives you a bunch of really amazing options um, that's very implicit and you can understand. But what Golang Migrate does is uh, it takes a bunch of files which have SQL in it, and it executes those um, those commands against your data store in a in a sequential fashion, and um, and what it expects is it expects uh, the name of the file to be a specific um, extension, so it it needs like dot up or dot down dot SQL and then and then the sequential number. So this is an example of a migration file. As you can see, this is pure SQL. It's nothing else. And with Golang Migrate, it's it's really simple to like execute those um, in an orderly fashion onto your data store. Um, in my case, um, I like writing shell scripts, so <laughs> so I have a shell script to execute that uh, database uh, migration with migrate and um, with the database URL and and the path where my migrations are stored. Let's uh, let's look at the code snippet for the router. So this router uses Goshi as I've um, um, as I've mentioned, it also imports um, the controllers um, from that uh, particular um, repository, DIY Nutrition, and this router is also in the same area. If you go to that GitHub URL, you can see. Um, as you can see, this router is really plain vanilla, right? So it's really so simple. You get the new router, and and you have a sub-router with the dot route, and then you have these methods that you want to implement or, or your uh, endpoints in this case, and you run the server. It's, it's really that simple with Goshi. This is a code snippet from the controller. Um, and as you can see, this is a basic Go function. All this does um, is it gets the information from the model uh, it gets the data from the model, and it um, it JSON marshals it, and it writes the response. And as you can see, I've hard-coded some values and removed error checks, so it all fits in one slide. Um, but um, it's a lot better on the GitHub repository. Um, next one is is a code snippet from the model. So this is doing a little bit more than the other two uh, Go functions, right? So uh, what this is doing is um, it's connecting to the database. It's it's doing a select query, getting all the vegetables from it. And um, it's going over each of them and converting them into a type that the controller wants it to be. And again, it has been, uh, this code snippet has been modified to fit to the screen. And um, let's go back to the architecture diagram out here for a little bit. Yeah, so in this diagram, we, we have seen the router is implemented with Gaoshi, and, um, and there is the controller where, where also the auth happens. Also, um, if it passes, it goes um, to the model, gets the data, or updates the data based on whichever operation you want to perform, and then returns it back to the JSON response. And um, as um, you have seen, uh, this is like a really simple set of packages I've used to implement that. The final set of um, slides are
a rate limiting. Uh, with rate limiting, uh, well, you can implement rate limiting, you can get a new limiter, you can impose um, uh, dropping or limiting events using allow and limit. And, um, and a summary of all this is, uh, is here. Um, so for the router, I've used Goshi, and controller and model is basic Go. Data store packages are gonna be libpq database SQL. And uh, for migrations, it's, um, I've used Golang migrate, and for auth, it's net, net HTTP basic auth, and for rate limiting, it's uh, time rate. And these are the references I've used to implement this. And, and the, code, um, the code base is out there. I'll tweet out the slides uh, by end of the day. And I'm, I'm at Grit and Compassion on Twitter. Thank you. <laughs>